message. The title I gave to the message is, What is it to commune? <clears throat> we can give communion different names, and we all know what we're talking about. <clears throat> I'll get into that a little bit, a little bit later. <clears throat> I'm going to read in Matthew 26, <clears throat> I think in verse 17, I'm going to start. It says, Now the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, Where wilt thou that we prepare thee to eat the Passover? And he said, <clears throat> and he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, Mas The Master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. <clears throat> and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he, he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. We heard a little bit about this last Sunday. <clears throat> Verse 24, the Son of Man goeth as is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. And I, I noticed this last Sunday, <clears throat> and I thought maybe Titus would um, make comment on it, but he didn't. It says <clears throat> that they all had said, Lord, is it I? But uh, Judas said, Master, is it I? He didn't call him Lord. Which it still denotes the same thing, and I don't know, I, I didn't really make a study in that. I just found it kind of interesting. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I don't know. It's just It's just a thought that went through my mind. He didn't. He called him a master, but um, we can look at, we can call somebody our master and still not recognize him as our Lord, although Jesus was Lord and master. So I don't know. <clears throat> it's just the thought that was going through my mind and would be interested, would, I would be interested to hear some thoughts sometime um, about that. <clears throat> Verse 26, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup and gave thanks to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with Drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And they had sung a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> if we think of the Lord's Supper, um, different names <clears throat> can, that we can use for this sacrament. <clears throat> the Lord's Supper com commemorates the Passover uh, meal that Jesus ate with his disciples. Um, <clears throat> Eutychrist is a, is a uh, term that I have heard used. It doesn't get used very often. <clears throat> I looked it up in the dictionary. It says Thanksgiving, spiritual communion with God. <clears throat> and, you know, that's something that we can have all the time, not just, not just uh, at the time when we, could say, have communion, have the Lord's Supper, <clears throat> so, or commemorate the Lord's Supper. Um, Communion is another term that we use for it. As we commune with God and with other fellow believers. You know, I was, as I was studying, I was thinking about, you know, how, how does, how does communion affect us? How does it, how, what, what is going through my mind today? What is going through your mind today 
am I thinking about this the same <clears throat> as if Jesus would be right here in our presence, that we could see him, that we would, you know, if, if Jesus would be the one teaching us, if Jesus would be the one, um, I could say, introducing this to us, <clears throat> if it would be something new that we have never would have um, experienced before, what uh, would we look at it differently? You know, it's that's questions that we can never really answer because it. <clears throat> um, It's going places where we we can't go, but we can ask the question: Is this is this precious to us? Is it is it important to us? <clears throat> is it a special time of commemorating what Jesus has done for us? And you know, as I as I was thinking about it, <clears throat> not just Jesus did Jesus teach his disciples about um, his suffering. His, uh, I mean, what he you know what he had to go through. Not just did he have to tell did he tell them, but. But he also did go through very much a lot of suffering and pain, and and if that wasn't enough, you know, all the mockery, and <clears throat> they spit into his face and um, blindfolded him and, and hit him, and um, you know, if that wasn't enough, it was, you know. Uh, Judas betrayed him, and Peter denied him, and uh, he, you know, <clears throat> could say his earthly friends forsook him, his disciples, um, at least the picture that I get, there was, they weren't standing around him and supporting him and here he was before the judge they were you know questioning him and if he said something they used it against him if he said nothing they used it against him <clears throat> and he did that because he loved us because he was willing to come to earth to shed his blood and to die on the cross, to go through all that suffering just so it's possible for us to have our sins washed away with that blood. <clears> that <throat> our lives can be acceptable. There's a <clears throat> portion in 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, I'm going to read some of it. I know some of it I'll read later then, but verse 17, it says, Now in this that I, I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together for better, but for the worse. First of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Well, there must be must be also heresies among you that they which are approved be made manifest among you when ye come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the Lord's Supper for eating in eating every one taketh before their own his own supper and one is hungry another is drunken what have ye not houses to eat and drink in or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not what shall I say unto you Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. 
I guess what really stood out to me is verse 18 there where it says, I hear that there be divisions among you and I partly believe it. How we feel today, um, you know, it should draw us together because we're here to be reminded of the price that Jesus paid on the cross, the love that he has for us. Now, he was willing to, to suffer all this for us, um, and we're here to be reminded about that. And <clears throat> we can lay down our, our, our uh, differences and do what about tomorrow? What about um, two weeks from now? What about two months from now? Um, or is it something that we take up our differences and um, through the week, and yet Sundays we try to act like Christians should act. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> if if that's the if that's the case, then we're pounding those nails into Jesus' hands and into his feet. <clears throat> and I'm not saying that we don't face things that are that we face uh, d uh, differences and that we but you know it's it shouldn't I mean that's that's what um, Christian life is about is to that we're brothers we stand together we build each other up we strengthen each other we we uh, <clears throat> we have the same goal and and uh, if if uh, that we are there helping each other along <clears throat> In verse 26, it says, As often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Um, and it, I guess I'll just read on down. That I'll read it again later. But it says, Therefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself and let him eat that bread and drink that cup. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. <clears throat> You know that's what we that's what we uh, in council meeting um, was to say examine to take inventory to be sure that there's nothing. Uh, do you know I, I, uh, there's always the uh, chance that we we think. Nobody knows anything about it. We can hide it. <clears throat> you know, verse 30, it says, For this cause are many weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. <clears throat> if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. <clears throat> are we Are we seek? weak and sickly or are we on fire for God is living for God is it our, is it our um, priority our most important thing the most important reason that we are here on earth is that <clears throat> why we are here is to always remember the love that God has for us what he was willing to do for me and that he was willing to do it for for you and for anyone that desires that blood can be applied <clears throat> Lord's Supper communion it reminds us you know if we read the account of the Lord's Supper the Last Supper Jesus instituted it. We think when we take communion, it reminds us of that. Of, um, <clears throat> but you know, 
it, it can strengthen our faith. It can draw us closer. <clears throat> but you know, it should, whenever, whenever we gather to worship, it should, we should, it should, um, our, our fellow, fellow uh, brothers and sisters in the church, it should give us strength and courage that we are, we are here for each other to, to give us, to strengthen and um, to help that we stay on that road that leads to heaven. <clears throat> In Luke 22, um, Jesus Jesus told them to go and prepare the Passover, and I'm going to read this and um, if think about this as if if Jesus if we would be there, you know, Jesus told us to go and. And find this, you know, this man in the upper room, and and make ready. And Jesus was there serving. <clears throat> Verse thirteen, Luke twenty-two, verse thirteen. It says, "And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. When the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. <clears throat> you know." It's just, um, I think a little bit earlier there it says that, you know, um, in Matthew, it, it gave it there in the account that I read too, that, you know, Jesus said that they would, they should go and, and they meet this man and, and they would tell him. And they went and they found, like it says there, as he had told them, um, you know, Jesus, not just did Jesus tell them to go to this certain place and, and there was a room there, um, but that they should go and they would meet this man. You know, <clears throat> Jesus knew that they would meet this man. Jesus didn't, um, you know... I would, you know, I would, I could go and search something and say, well, I know, I've, I've seen there's a room there, you know, go to this door and knock at this door and tell him that we, we need this room. But that's not the, what Jesus told them. He told them to go and they would meet the man and he would, ha he would have a place for them. And, you know, it's just a, <clears throat> I'd say an awesomeness that, that God has, that he, he knows everything. And, and it was exactly found as he had told them. <clears throat> and um, it says, and he came and he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, This, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the wine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, the cup after the supper, saying, The cup is the new. Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Um, <clears throat> it was probably, you know, it was hard for them to understand because, you know, we know that they didn't, it was hard to comprehend that Jesus was going to suffer. Jesus was going to be beaten. And people were going to mock him and put the crown of thorns on his head. And <clears throat> it's a, a sad time. For them that Jesus was telling them here how this was going to be and he was preparing them to
to go on. <clears throat> And not just for them, but for his people all through up until now even. <clears throat> Jesus said this do in remember in remembrance of me. How do I how do we remember Christ in the Lord's Supper? <clears throat> it's not by thinking about what he did and why he, what he did and why he did it is because he what he did is he gave his life and why he did it is because he loved us <clears throat> that it's not just a ritual that we go through because if it is then it will become meaningless to us. <clears throat> you know, we look at, <clears throat> I guess it just, it, it's, um, what we heard this morning of the parables, the different parables, and um, even some of the discussion we had in our Sunday school lesson, different things stood out to me. And <clears throat> one of um, sometimes um, well, and then even last night, the message that we heard um, that Titus preached about making excuses. And in, um, you know, uh, Judas betrayed Jesus. In our Sunday school lesson, we, uh, the thought was brought up that sometimes God uses evil men to fulfill his plan, the plan that he had. <clears throat> Did Jesus ask Judas, invite Judas to be one of the twelve disciples because he needed him for the betrayal? I don't believe so. Judas had the opportunity that all men all men have. Judas had the opportunity to be true to God, but he made a choice. <clears throat> I don't think it was easy for Jesus to tell his disciples that one of you is going to uh, betray me. I don't think it was easy for Jesus to tell Peter that he would he would deny him three times. <clears throat> I think it it struck something in the disciples' hearts when Jesus told them that one of you is going to betray me. <clears throat> but you know, <clears throat> think about it. Judas, why did he even ask? He already had made the plans. Why did he even ask it? Master, is it I? <clears throat> Jesus gave every opportunity to Judas to change his life, to, to choose what is right. He gave him all the opportunity the same opportunity as the other disciples had. <clears throat> we can't defend Judas by saying that was that was what that was the way the only way that God's plan would be fulfilled because there 
were many, many other evil men that could have, could have done it. He was a responsible human being who made his own decisions, his own choices. <clears throat> but because of that, it did, it did fulfill the word of God. <clears throat> We can't lift him up as a hero because he he committed um, evil. It was evil to make those plans. But you know, <clears throat> he failed. The wor but the worst part is that he didn't. He didn't take. He still could have chosen. He could. He could have repented of it. He betrayed Jesus, <clears throat> and <clears throat> Judas was lost for the same reason that many people are lost today. Because he did not repent of his sins. He didn't make that choice, but he ended it. He went out and ended his life. I read that in, in the old times, their bread and wine were common things that were used in practically every meal. And Jesus here gave them a new wonderful meaning. Be that however it is. Um, he did institute the new covenant. And, you know, with that, um, he, w he was willing to give his life. He was willing to um, go all the way. <clears throat> when he died, he fulfilled the old covenant <clears throat> and established the new covenant. <clears throat> no longer does the blood of animals um, suffice. <clears throat> and we're not saved from our sins by participating in, in any religious ceremony but by trusting Jesus Christ as our Savior and having his blood applied it's what it takes to, to save us <clears throat> I'm going to read the account in Mark 14. <clears throat> There's a, I'll probably make some comments as we go through. <clears throat> Mark 14, verse 1, it says, After two days was the feast of the Passover of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. <clears throat> but they said, Not on the feast day, day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she brake the box and poured it on his head. <clears throat> and there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of ointment made? It might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. <clears throat> Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me, for ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may, go, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body and to burying. <clears throat> why, why did they take offense? Why did... Um, 
Why do we sometimes take offense? <clears throat> you know, was Jesus, was he not worthy of this expensive of ointment? Yes, I believe he was. <clears throat> but you know, the faults that they found, Jesus, that they found with her, Jesus uh, just told them that you still have opportunity to do good to the poor. And you know, <clears throat> that's something, you know, he said, uh, for you have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will, you may do them good. Isn't that true for us today? <clears throat> we still have that opportunity. How much do we do it? <clears throat> um, verse 9, Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached through, throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went into the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they had heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. He looked for opportunity and... They were glad for it. They offered to pay him. He took, he was glad, I believe, to take the money. And yet, it never did him any good. He, ne he never used it. <clears throat> you know, he threw it on the floor of the temple. Did he think <clears throat> Jesus would somehow just get away like he did before? <clears throat> Did he think his sin that he committed wouldn't have any consequences? <clears throat> he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Verse 12, On the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou may eat the Passover? He sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go into the city, and there you shall... And there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him, and whithersoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, The master saith, Worship is the guest chamber where I, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. <clears throat> he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepare there, and prepared there, make ready for us. The disciples went and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. In the evening cometh with the twelve, and as they did, as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him, one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he said, and, and he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish, the Son of Man. Indeed, goeth it is written of him, but woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It were good for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed and brake it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat this my body. He took the cup when he had given thanks and he gave it to them when they had drank of it. And he said to them, This is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen... I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will I not, will not I. <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, 
that this day, even this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. <clears throat> but he spake more vehemently, if I, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. <clears throat> um, Peter was, I'd say, outspoken. He was a leader. He, you know, he, I'd say he made it sound so sure that he is not, regardless of the cost, he's not going to deny Jesus. <clears throat> and, you know, even if he needed to die with him, he wouldn't. He wouldn't deny him. But Jesus told him before, this night before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, it says there in verse 31, likewise also said they all. <clears throat> um, but Peter I'd say he was the leader, and um, and so it the account focuses on him, but it does say that they were all they were all scattered. Um, verse thirty-two, and they came to a place which is called Gethsemane, and when he and he said unto his disciples, "Sit ye here, and I, while I shall pray." And he take with him Peter, James, and John, and me and to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. <clears throat> and he saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but as thou wilt. <clears throat> And he cometh and find, findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst thou not watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, yes, ye, ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. You know, I always think there that what was wrong. You know, after the second time, how could they, how could they fall asleep again? Um, they didn't, they didn't fully realize what was happening. I don't believe. But <clears throat> we know the great love that Jesus had for us. We know what he did for us, the price he paid, the pain he went through, the suffering he did. How can we sleep? How can we grow cold? That's why I like to um, liken that sleeping to how can we grow distant? How can we forget the suffering, the beating that he took for us, the nailing to the cross, the shedding of his blood, the giving of his life. How can we take that lightly? <clears throat> Verse 41, And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep now and take your rest. It, it is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. You know, they, they slept. The, and when he came back the third time, he, he told them, oh, just go ahead and sleep now. It's, you know, the, say the, the time of prayer and agony is, is now behind. <clears throat> Verse 42, rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and scribes and elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Take him and lead him safely away. 
And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. Here again, he used Master. <clears throat> it's 46, and they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew his sword and smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. <clears throat> Why did one of the twelve have a sword? <clears throat> I don't think Jesus told him to take, take a sword along. Why do we sometimes have things we really don't have a need of? Maybe we really shouldn't have. <clears throat> I think I said it before. I picture, <clears throat> I don't picture him with that sword like this. I picture him with that sword like this. He was going to, he was going to take care of this man. He was going to cut his head off. That's my picture. My picture is that he, this man that he cut his ear off, ducked and turned his head sideways, and that's why he caught his ear. But that's, <clears throat> I have nothing to base that on. <clears throat> But I don't think he was just trying to cut his ear off. <clears throat> but nonetheless, the question we, should, we could ask ourselves is why? Why do you have a sword? Why was he trying to um, accomplish, I could say, in his own strength? <clears throat> 48, Jesus answered and said unto them, Are you come out as a, against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. <clears throat> there followed him a certain young man, having a little linen cloth about his naked body. The young men laid hold on, on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Jesus led, and, and they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, and Peter followed afar off, <clears throat> even to the place of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. <clears throat> we could say, <clears throat> Jesus, Peter wanted to see what's going to happen. But he, ha he hung out with the wrong crowd. <clears throat> he says he followed him afar off. Are we, are we like Peter, following afar off? I want to be a Christian, but, you know, I still have, I still have this I'd like to do. I still have that I'd like to do. I don't want to fully... Um, identify with, with Jesus. <clears throat> Following afar off. <clears throat> and then, even into the place, even to the palace of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. He was right there with the servants of the high priest and warming himself at their fire. <clears throat> Verse 55, the chief priests and all the consul sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another one made without hands but neither so did their witness agree together and the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus saying answerest thou nothing what is it which these witnesses which these witness against thee but he held his peace and answered nothing Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? 
And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witness? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. <clears throat> You know, shouldn't that have been a uh, evidence enough that all these witnesses bear false witness and none of the none of them agreed? <clears throat> and they condemned him by his identifying himself who he was. <clears throat> Verse 65, and some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him, Prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not neither understand what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. <clears throat> and the maid saw him again and began to say unto them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after that they stood, they that stood by said again unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the, the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. <clears throat> if we look at the account of Judas and the account of Peter. Judas also wept, and he went out and hanged himself. Peter wept, and in turn, later, Jesus asked him, and he, he proclaimed, he, he uh, three times proclaimed, and Jesus told him, feed my sheep and feed my lambs. And Peter did that. <clears throat> Judas could have found repentance also if he would have chosen to. <clears throat> and the account, I, I didn't think of it, or I tried to look it up. I believe I'm correct that Peter was also um, crucified, his death, and he asked to be crucified upside down because he didn't feel that he was worthy to die in the same way that Jesus was. <clears throat> I believe it's in the martyr's mirror. <clears throat> I didn't. I didn't look it up, but. Peter had a, a true rep repentance for denying Jesus. <clears throat> and say his, he lit his candle on both ends. And he was really, you know, he did what he could for Jesus. How much on fire am I for Jesus? How much... What is, how, if, uh, if my zeal is put on a scale, where do I end up? <clears throat> do I always have a, a prayer on my heart if I, if I run into a difficulty, if I, things I face? Where do I turn to? Am I like 
Samson trying to accomplish it on my own strength? Or do I turn to God and pray and ask him to help me? <clears throat> as, uh, as we think of communion, it just it just uh, struck me that, like I said in the beginning, if Jesus was here teaching us, would it make a difference for us this morning? Would we would we feel differently? Would we take it more serious? Or do we realize, that, are we truly thankful for the price that he paid for us? <clears throat> to commune is to be, to be reminded, to, um, I could say, to partake of the suffering and the death that Jesus willingly, he knew, he knew before he came to earth, before he was born as a baby, he knew what, what his mission was, and he was willing to do it. <clears throat> you know, when I, when, when you chose to serve Christ, when, when I chose to serve Christ to follow Him, none of us knew what, what all. None of us knows what we still have to face. What we still, what is before us. Will we remain faithful? Or will we turn to the side? I guess <clears throat> I don't know the details of what Jesse said this morning in sun, Sunday school class. He said it just just makes him shake his head. What will people what will people say about me when when I'm no longer here? What will people say about you when you're no longer here? But you know, all that doesn't matter that much. What does God say about you? What does God say about me? That's, that's the important thing. <clears throat> Let's never take communion lightly. Let's never take it for granted the price that it, it was paid for us. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I guess that's all I have for the message. and um, It was just a I guess it was good for me for to think of the great love that Jesus had. That we can that we can do this um, have this service of communion and being reminded, and that we can be um, that Jesus instituted it to his disciples and it was passed down and that we can pass it on, that we can continue to practice what Jesus, how Jesus taught. <clears throat>